Hey, what is up, everybody? I am here to give you guys my preview and predictions for the WWE Mae Young Classics. Uh, you know, um, this is something that the WWE really has been hyping up for a while now. The first four episodes have been released on the WWE Network, and I'm going to watch them when I get home tonight. Um, but I figured I would kind of take this time to kind of talk about... Um, you know, preview the Mae Young Classic, talk about the field and stuff. Um, and obviously we have uh, the Mae Young Classics. Um, and this is something that the WWE has been pumping up for a while now. Um, they announced this during, uh, you know, uh, WrestleMania week. Um, and you knew that this was going to be a big deal. And this is pretty much a similar tournament, I would say, of what the uh, Cruiserweight Classics was last summer. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, you have 32 of the best women in the world competed uh, in the Mayon Classics. Uh, you have uh, some notable names in here. You do have um, Maya Yim, uh, who's been in uh, TNA, and she's wrestled other places. Obviously, you have Serena Deeb, who's been... Uh, you know, uh, in WWE before when she was in the Straight Edge Society. You have um, Marty Bell, same thing, also been in TNA Impact Wrestling. You have uh, Jazzy Gaber, who's also been in TNA Impact Wrestling, Santana Garrett. But you also have some names that you've seen in NXT, Sarah Logan, Lacey Evans. Uh, I think that anybody else you've seen, we've seen in NXT. Oh, Vanessa Bourne, uh, Bianca Belair. Uh, I know I just kind of went on and huge tangent, but you do have some noticeable names in the uh, Mayon Classics, which I'm, you know, uh, which I like, but you have some new faces coming in, and you know, um, I can crap as much as I want that they're doing this tournament, but the one thing that it does do is um, it gives wrestlers a chance who, um, who has never had any opportunities to make it to the WWE because, uh, uh, a platform to wrestle in front of P uh, the WWE, so um, yeah, I uh, I uh, think that's really awesome. Um, and uh, you know, I also think that it, it it's kind of another uh, you know feather in the cap for the women's revolution. This was something that the WWE kind of started back in 2015. It was kind of slowly, I would say, started maybe even in 2013 where women were starting to get. Uh, more noticeable, you obviously, um, so the WWE now has a whole tournament just get it dedicated to women, and, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how, uh, that goes down, you know, I can't wait to, um, I, I expect some, uh, match of the year contenders to take place in this tournament, you know, you had the Cruiserweight Classics that had a match of the, that had a ton of match of the year contenders, you can't even, uh, there was just such good matches, the United Kingdom Championship Tournament. You had some match of the year contenders in there as well. Um, so, um, you know, uh, I expect this to have the same thing. Um, now, uh, so, uh, you know, obviously the hype, I think, has been pretty huge for the uh, Mae Young Classics. Uh, so, you know, that's the stuff I like about the Mae Young Classics. Here's the stuff that I don't like about the Mae Young Classics. One, what was the point? Why need? What? Why did you need to do the Mayon Classics? Uh, there was really no need to do it, especially because you're having a tournament for with women. When you have the NXT Women's Division, who is lacking in names, They're like they were, uh, they were running out of opponents for Asuka to face for the NXT Women's Title. They only had a so few amount of opponents. Why the hell did they just sign some of these women just to NXT? You know that kind of affected that because then. You know, you have all these women that are just going to go right to this tournament. Um, when, when instead putting them on NXT, I think would have been a better utilization for them. I still think that's stupid, and you're not going to change my mind. Um, and it's also just the WWE just keep throwing... They just keep throwing tournaments out left and right. And it's at the point where you get where you start to get burned out from it. You know, you had the Cruiserweight Classics. You had the United Kingdom Championship Tournament. Then you had um, the NXT... You know, um, you have the now you have the Mayon Classics, but then in between we've had the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classics. We also had the tournament to crown the first ever SmackDown Tag Team Champions. It's getting to be too much, um, and I love tournaments um, and all, but 
you know, there's also people that have probably sat through the New Japan tournament and the WCPW tournament. So I think people just are done with tournaments. Um, and I really hope that this is going to be the last tournament for a while because, uh, yeah, it's just getting to be too many tournaments. Um, but And what, what will they come up with next? A tag team tournament? You know, um, in, uh, in reality, they really should have just, uh, like they said, they really should have just signed some of these women to NXT. And if you want to do a tournament, you could have just done a 16-woman tournament. You didn't need to do a 32-woman tournament. Some of these women, I think, would have been better off on NXT because um, Asuka um, now had nobody to face. Now, think about it like this. Instead of having Kari San, um, who's um, booked to be in this tournament... Instead of having Kawi San um, be in this tournament and fight for the Mae Young Classics, imagine this: Asuka, after retaining her NXT Women's Championship against Ember Moon at NXT Takeover Brooklyn two, three, no, now without knowing that she got hurt and stuff, which I think that injury is obviously an angle because what a coincidence! She she gets hurt right at they announce it right after. Um, you know, but that's a different story. Imagine Kawi San, though, comes right out on the screen, whatever, and has a face-off with Asuka, showing that she's going to come after that title. Um, that, I think, would be a much bigger impact than having her be just be in this tournament as another woman. Um, imagine having someone even to... Um, because having her just kind of show up with everybody else just doesn't make her feel as special as they want you to make you believe. That would have, I think, sent the message that she wants to go after Asuka. Um, obviously, another problem I have with this tournament is what does the winner get out of this tournament? Um, because they didn't really explain that too much. Um, what you could say that was the problem with the Cruiserweight Classics, but I think we had, no, we had known anyways WWE was getting a Cruiserweight division, so we at least had known that we were getting... You know, um, the cruise we we were they, what the cruiserweight division was getting, the United Kingdom Championship tournament. It was pretty self apparent they were fighting for a belt. Um, what are they gonna fight for here? They they can't fight for another title because, like I talked about before, Raw, SmackDown, and NXT all have a women's championship. You can't have a fourth woman's title. Um, and you know, I originally was um. I really don't want them to make this belt, this tournament, for the vacant NXT Women's title. They probably don't have a choice, um, but that's just going to be stupid because you're just going to have someone come right in and win the NXT Women's title, and no one will give a crap. I won't give a crap, and it would just be extremely stupid because you can't just throw a... Ch you can say, well, they went through a tournament to count the best, but, there's more, but, but you can't just go through a tournament and just win a title right away. Um, I didn't, that would just be really stupid. Especially, too, because like, then, obviously, with when you're champion, you have to also talk and stuff, too. So, you know. Um, so, that's some of the stupid stuff, I think, that's come from this tournament. I personally don't think that, as much as I, you know, want to see this tournament stuff, I personally don't think it really needed to happen, and it really should not have happened. And the outcome's just, just stupid in the way that they brought in Kawi-san, um, or whatever her name is. Is abs is, you know, really it is kind of stupid as well. The way you know some of these names could have been brought in in a bigger way than just competed in a tournament. Also, I think the problem is too with this tournament is they have also filmed the matches way in advance, so that way people um, spoilers got revealed, so people already know the outcome, so no one's gonna really give as much of a crap. I don't. I know this technically happened with the Cruiserweight Classics as well, but um, I don't recall any spoilers re being released. Also, with the Cruiserweight Classic, I think these, the Cruiserweight Classics had more names that people knew. Like Cedric Alexander, like Witch Swan, like TJ Perkins, you know, Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa, um, Kota Hibushi. He was a huge name they brought in for this tournament. Zack Sabre Jr. You know, there was a, a ton of names and it just had a ton more star power. This woman's tournament doesn't have really any star power. I believe the biggest star power that's in this tournament... Uh, that people are gonna probably know is Serena Deep, who was in the Straight Edge Society. That w probably who w that was a crappy faction in the WWE. So I think they should have brought in more stuff names like those other indie wrestlers that people are gonna know, like maybe Lacey Ev no not Lacey Evans, Candice LeRae. You know you have Kawi San, but uh, they didn't bring in I don't think enough names for this tournament. It's a lot of no names, and uh, you could say well you don't watch. The 
people not a lot everybody watches the indies still um the cruiserweight classics people are buzzing about it because of who was in it i don't really hear anybody saying oh i can't wait to see this person in the tournament um so i just personally think that part of it's stupid so like i said there's positives and negatives about this tournament um i do want to see it and stuff and i will be watching it but um i just don't really think it needed to happen and i don't think you know like i talked about it I'm not going to repeat myself, but let me go over the matches for this tournament, and I'll just kind of predict who's going to win. So for, um, now it's kind of tough for me to call them because I don't know a lot of these women, but for Jazzy Gabbard versus Abby Lath, I'm just going to say Abby Lath wins that. Rachel Evers versus Marty Bell, I'm going to say Marty Bell is going to win. They've been hyping up Marty Bell a little bit more than Rachel Evers, not just to be honest. Uh, Princess Sujit versus Kaylee Ray. I don't see Kaylee Ray losing that. Kaylee Ray has been, like I said, buzzed as also. They haven't really shown enough of Princess Suja. Well, I think she's going to win that match. Um, for Zai Lee versus Mercedes Martinez. Uh, probably say Mercedes Martinez. They've really been hyping her up as well. Um, now, this is a little bit of a tough one to pick. Nicole Savoy versus Renee Gonzalez. Because they haven't really, you know, because these women haven't been hyped up like over the other um i'll just say um just a guess nicole savoy because why not for sarah logan versus maya Le maya yim this is a tough one to pick because uh sarah logan's been on television wrestling and in nxt and maya yim has uh been hyped up pretty well I'm going to say uh, Sal Logan wins. I think they're going to go for an upset. And I think this should be the upset. Because I don't think anybody would expect it. And you have Sal Logan has been wrestling on television. So why not? Uh, and then for Zeta versus China Baszler. Uh, um, I'm going to say Zeta wins. Because why not? Um, for Kawi San versus Tessa Blanchard. Kawi San's winning. They've hyped up big that this is the biggest name they have in this tournament. They're not going to have a lose in the first round. That would just be stupid. Um, Sage Beckett versus Bianca Belair. I'm just going to say Sage Beckett, Bianca Belair. just kind of seems like a no-name. Dakota Kai versus Kavita Devi. Dakota Kai is going to win that. They've hyped her up more than um, Kavita Devi. Ray Ripley versus uh, Miranda Salinas. I'm gonna say uh Um I'm gonna say uh Ray Ripley wins, I guess. Vanessa Bourne versus Serena Deeb. Serena Deeb, Vanessa Bourne sucked when I saw her wrestle, so I don't want her to win. Santana Garrett versus Piper um Niven. Uh I don't have no idea, so I'm just gonna say Santana Garrett because I actually know who that is a little bit better. Tarina Conte versus Lacey Evans. I'm going to say Levy Lacey Evans because she has a better story. Ashi Raymond versus Tony Storm. I'm going to say Tony Storm because they haven't done anything to really make me think that Asha Raymond will win. They haven't featured her as much. And that's the uh, entire um, Mayon Classic predictions. Um, I know it was very quick, but um, I don't know a lot of the people. But, you know, I... Uh, but you know, I gave my, I gave, I tried to give somewhat of a reason why the people are gonna win. Uh, but yeah, I can't wait to watch this tournament. There will be a live reactions. Um, I will be doing a live reactions for uh, each of the episodes to kind of give my reactions to it since I it's been uh, piping up for months. Uh, but if you want to check out my other Mayon Classic videos, click down in the description box below. And that's pretty much it, guys. Please make sure you guys like, comment. And uh, share this video so people will watch it. Make sure you guys subscribe to this YouTube channel for more content. And click on the bell so that way every time I upload a video, you guys will get the notification for it. And make sure you guys do the same for the CM Brothers. I don't want to talk any of the YouTube channels. And that's pretty much it, guys. Talk to you later.